This lesson is not so much a lesson in chapter four, but it's a lesson that I've decided to add because it's a concept that you need in chapter four that maybe you are not familiar with. What I want to point out to you is that the equations that we do in this chapter have two variables, which is unlike the equations that you've always done before, where you had only one variable and you were able to get that variable equals a number, right? Like y equals two or x equals 1.5. Here, we're not going to be able to get a number answer because there are two variables and so you don't have enough information. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the equations in terms of one of the variables. And when you have more than one variable in equation, you have this thing called the literal equation. So let's fill in the first blank. An equation that has two or more variables is called a literal equation. To rewrite a literal equation, you're going to solve for one variable in terms of the other. Now, for the purposes of chapter four, we're going to take our equations and get the y by itself. But in theory, you could get the x by itself. It's not going to be helpful for the lessons that we're doing right now. But later on in your math career, you'll be finding equations um, that might ask you to solve for a variable that you haven't uh, solved for before. But like I said, for the purposes of this chapter, we're going to always get the y by itself. So let's practice. So here's how it goes. Solve the equation 2y plus 5x equals 6 for y. So that means that they want us to get the y by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the 5x to the other side, and then we'll get rid of the 2. So we're going to drop a line down the equal sign, and we're going to inverse 5x. So just like back in Chapter 1, you have 5x, and 5x is being added. So the inverse of addition is subtraction. So we're going to subtract 5x from both sides. Now that cancels out, and you bring down 2y equals. Now this is a number, and this is a variable. And you can't combine a number with a variable. They're not like terms. Remember the phrase like terms? So since they're not like terms, the only thing that you can write is 6 minus 5x. Now the next step to get the y by itself is to get rid of the 2. So what operation do you have? Multiplication. What's the inverse? Division. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. Now here's something that I want you to pay attention to. Usually, we, multiple, we divide one side by two, and then we divide the other side by two. But since this has multiple pieces, everything has to divide by two. It might look unbalanced right now because you're doing it once to the left and what seems like twice to the right. But you can't just divide one piece if the other one doesn't divide as well. So every piece has to divide. You might want to annotate or note that somewhere over here on the side, that you have to divide all of the terms. So now that cancels and I just get y equals and I should always reduce if I can. 6 divided by 2 is 3 and there are a couple things you can do. One is that you can divide 5 divided by 2 and get 2.5 but what I'd like you to do is leave it as the fraction 5 halves. If it doesn't go in evenly, leave it. So on the side, I'm going to put two notes that I want you to write. The first one is that all terms divide, and that's in reference to this piece right here where I divided everything by two, not just once to the left and once to the right. I divided once to everything. The second thing that I want you to write is to leave fractions if they don't go in evenly. So even though you can do five divided by two, whoops, I'm going to encourage you to leave it as the fraction and you'll understand why as we go through this chapter. So what I have as my final answer is y equals 3 minus 5 over 2x. All right, if you think you can try these on your own, you're certainly more than welcome to. If you want to follow along, I'll do number one with you. So the first thing that we want to do is recognize that they're asking us to get the y by itself. So we're going to move this 10x to the other side, and then you'll see something will happen in a moment. But let's subtract 10x, and the reason that we're subtracting is because the 10 is positive. Now, 
One thing that I want you to keep in mind is that the X has to travel with the 10. You can't subtract 10. You don't have 10. You have 10X. So you have to subtract 10X from both sides. When you bring down this Y, it's negative. So just like we did in chapter 1, you have to bring it down as negative. And we'll take care of that in a moment. Just go with me. And I'll get 20 minus 10X. Now... The Y technically is not by itself because there's a negative sign right here. So squeeze a little one in front, and now you have negative one Y. So when we had negative one coefficients back in chapter one, we divided both sides by negative one. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So those cancel and I get Y equals 20 divided by negative one is negative 20. And now I can write minus negative 10, but I should write plus 10 X. And I'll go over that right now. I have a minus and then 10 divided by negative one is negative 10. So I would have minus negative 10 X, but I wanna make it simpler and write it as plus. So you should always do any sort of calculation, make it look friendlier if you can. And so the answer is y equals negative 20 plus 10x. All right, try the other three on your own. All right, let's look at each of the answers. Uh, when I subtracted x over here, I got 90 minus x. When I went to divide by negative 10, don't forget that 10 was negative, I squeezed a little 1 in front so I could write the fraction 1 divided by 10. Since it was a minus divided by a minus, or negative divided by a negative, it ended up being plus. Let's look at number three. When you bring the 5x over, this divides evenly, becomes 7, but this doesn't, so you leave the fraction negative 5 over 7. And then in number four, the same thing happened that happened here in number two, where I had to squeeze a 1 in front. Only this time it didn't turn into positive because it was uh, a positive and a negative. So I got negative 2 because I could divide that, but I can't divide negative 1 divided by 9. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.